As a chess player, frequently when some, uh, my opponent plays something new that is not very, very well known and it's new to me in the opening, I don't feel really confident about it unless I see the, that he, was, he has made a mistake and he did, there's something I can take advantage of. But there is, if there is some brand new idea and you have to deal with, with it at the board, then it creates little commotion. So what I want to talk about now is I want to introduce you to a revolutionary, I think is the most exciting discovery it's, to me, it's the most exciting discovery I have ever faced in Sicilian defense. Now, I don't want to sound like, oh, hey, I opened, I discovered something that doesn't make sense or it's not credible. Well, let me give you some statistics. I played this variation of Sicilian against some top players in the world, and I didn't play them in tournaments because I haven't played this in tournaments. I played it in, in a blitz games or relatively qu quick games, but may not be blitz, like 10 or 15 minutes. And I have result of 85 to 90 percent scoring with black. Now this definitely means something, and this cannot be neglected. So here is what I'm talking about, e4, c5, knight f3. Now second move d6 or knight c6, well it's going to transpose after d4, c takes d, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and knight c6. Now you see what I mean, on the second move you could have gone d6 or knight c6, you still could have gotten this position. Now this is maybe one of the most and the best known one of the best known position in Sicilian defense. And here basically are three moves, actually four moves. One is bishop e2, which is very harmless move for white, and main response for black is e5. The other move is bishop c4, that move that Fisher liked very much to play, and uh, also very well analyzed, and lately, White almost stopped playing this move. Now, the third move is f3 and bishop e3 or bishop e3 and f3 with this idea. And fourth, and the by far the most popular answer, the, the, the most popular variation is bishop g5. And this is the move I want to talk to you about. Now, if you have your opponent played bishop e2 or bishop c4 or f3 variation, now you can pick up the information about it and you have to study these positions, although they are not that dangerous for black. But what I want to discuss only the main variation, which is bishop to g5. And in this position, Normally, move, normal move is e6, and it's always, for years, for many, many years, there was played e6 and sometimes h6. What was never played in a tournament ever, on any level, is move g6. And that's the move I want to talk about. Now, this move seems extremely anti-positional and bad. Uh, let's see what white should do. Obviously the most expected uh, answer is bishop takes f6, but what are the other possibilities? White is practically forced to take the knight. If white doesn't and they play queen d2, then after bishop g7, black is going to get very favorable uh, variation of 
uh, very favorable uh, version of uh, Dragon variation. Then white is going to castle, and uh, black is going to castle, and eventually knight takes e4 threat is going to be uh, very actual, and bishop on g5 is clearly misplayed for Dragon, and it's supposed to stay on e3. So after bishop g5 and g6, white most obvious answer, bishop takes f6 and ef. Now let me tell you this, if somebody showed me this position, and if I have never seen this before, I would have said the black's decision is totally ridiculous, because black has weak pawn on d6, weak square, and white has good outpost with a knight on d5, besides pawn on d6 after bishop g7 can be simply captured. So what is black's gain? But the deeper you analyze this position and more carefully you look at it, the more sense this position makes. So I've played, as I already mentioned, countless games and I have never lost a game as a result of an opening, as a result of an opening. I lost maybe like two games and won maybe over 40 games with that against very strong opposition. And this may sound a little unrealistic, but those are the facts. These games can be picked up from um, uh, Internet Chess Club uh, library, it can be picked up, uh, uh, library database, and it can be picked up from various different sources. Black's results are incredible. So what Black wants to do, to put the bishop on g7, play f5, open the dark square bishop, and use the dynamics of their two bishops, since black, white, since white does not have a uh, dark square bishop, and they even sacrifice the d6 pawn. There is no way white can stop black from playing f5. And eventually bishop g7 and f5 will be played whether black likes it or not, so whether white likes it or not. So let's see several different responses that is possible. What I will do now, there are no big analysis and there is no theory that I can bring you some games played on the highest level, but I can bring you big majority of games that I played against very, very strong opposition. Most of them were GMs, some IMs, rated 25, 2600 and higher. If I did well against them, and I did well against them for two different reasons. One of them, I was better, uh, more familiar with the opening idea, and I knew this position better, but I think mostly because of the quality of the position. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through these games, and after each game, do the brief su summary of the outcome of in the opening. Now I will start with a game that was um, played with bishop c4 was played, bishop g7, white castled, black castled, and this is the first game played against relatively strong international master, knight b5 and f5. There is the pawn black can win. White can win, and they can win uh, this pawn actually by playing bishop c4 or bishop e2. Uh, bishop could have been on e2, or white could have castled queenside. We're going to see some of the varieties of it. And d6 pawn is what? e takes f, bishop takes f5, and here white played bishop to b3. Now, what is the point of this move, bishop to b3? Now, taking on d6, uh, white can, black can play simply bishop takes c2. This already also happened in one of my games. And 
black is doing very fine after queen takes c2 queen takes d6 black has no problems knight is gonna go to d4 with a great position for um, black now let's um, see what what else can white do here white did not take um, the pawn so they played bishop to b3 now let's see the outcome of it after bishop to b3 bishop to e5 black protects the pawn on d6 and um, white plays f4 bishop takes c3 and knight takes c3 you see pawn on f4 does not stand well it's some kind of somehow opens um, black's diagonal here for queen b6 check maybe and pawn is kind of create some weaknesses for central squares um rook e8 was played and after king h1 knight to a5 and after bishop d5 queen to b6 uh, black still has weak pawn on d6 but they have dynamics all this variation and whole idea of this variation is dynamics of the pieces you see how active the bishop on f5 rook on e8 and the other rook is going to go on c8 after queen to b6 uh, here after queen to b6 white went bishop b3 back they don't want to commit big piece like a rook to protecting one little pawn and they decided b bishop to b3 knight takes b3 a takes b3 queen to c5 you see black's pieces dominating the position now black wants to play rook e3 or maybe even rook e6 doubling rooks on e file black's stand black stands very well and black went on winning the game black has some advantage in this position white cannot go knight well white can go knight d5 but after rook to e6 or maybe rook to e6 followed by bishop e4 black after c4 bishop e4 black is doing very very well so now this is one game and the outcome what can i conclude about this game that black did have did activate their pieces and white never won the pawn on d6 now let's look at some other ways there are many different ways white can try to get an advantage it looks very promising for white and as you go through the possibilities you see that advantage is more and more difficult to get for white as you as you analyze those positions d4 cd knight takes d4 knight f6 knight c3 knight c6 and bishop to g5 now let's look at another continuation bishop takes f6 ef and one of these strong players here played bishop b5 move that makes sense bishop d7 white castled bishop g7 knight d2 e2 a6 bishop a4 and bishop e6 and after knight f4 black castled knight takes e6 f takes e and this position after bishop b3 and queen e7 queen d3 f5 black is doing very fine this is the second example uh, where white did not win the d6 pawn and both times black get got very good position you see knight is going to go to e5 possibility of playing e4 f4 knight e5 and f3 black did very well this is the second game with the same exact outcome white did not win a pawn white cannot get an advantage now there are a couple of other possibilities to play for white not win a pawn 